What is up, everybody? Renville here. And if you're a returning visitor, you know what we're going to be talking about because I've already been playing the snot out of this game since it came out last night. I'm recording this on the 28th of April. The game came out yesterday at like 10 p.m. And I'm, I'm already, I would say, somewhere in the ballpark of between, you know, tweaking things and doing configurations and playing around with a lot of things. I'm probably about eight hours into the game right now and just loving Jedi Survivor. This game is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and we're going to do the review today for the first impressions component. Um, there's going to be a lot of videos coming out about this game. I've already done some streams, some complete playthroughs. I've done the configuration for the uh, workbench guide. I'll be doing more guides and stuff around this game. But today is the first impressions video because I've got enough time you know, in the game now that I feel like I can get a good, pretty good first impressions video. And of course, there'll be a full review and everything else. But it should go without saying that, you know, I played Fallen Order through three times, and I have said that it is one of the best Star Wars experiences I have ever had. And just within the first few hours of gameplay, uh, Jedi Survivor, this game right here, has proven to be every bit as good as the first one, and it is... Um, exceeding in a lot of other areas like they have definitely pulled it off in terms of creating a sequel that is better than the first game which is pretty freaking amazing so as we get into the review here and we're going to switch over to some gameplay i just want to say that yes my first impression is it's absolutely worth it if you haven't already gotten the game why not if you're a star wars fan you really need to be playing this because even if you just strip out all the gameplay like Fallen Order was, I said this about Fallen Order, is like, even if you just strip out the fact that it's a video game, it's like one of the best Star Wars films ever made. And so far, this game has proven to be... like The, the, the whole Coruscant part of the intro in and of itself is like an action film. It's a heist movie. It was like two hours of gameplay, and it was like watching a heist film. I was like, this could literally just be a standalone Star Wars film, and yet it's just one part of this overarching... Uh, you know, game that is Jedi Survivor. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the game here um, so that I can give you guys a little bit more of some hands-on stuff. Because if you haven't been watching my my uh, streams or anything else, you know, I'm, I'm on the planet of Koba now and lots of stuff has happened. But here's the crazy thing. This, this game takes a lot of different approaches than the first game. So while uh, Jedi Fallen Order was somewhat of a linear experience you know you had planets that you could explore but it was very much on the rails um you, you definitely had to stick to the beaten path that is not the case here once you get to this planet now i don't know if this is the same for all the planets coruscant was very much kind of on the rails much like the first game but when we got to this planet i was pleasantly surprised to find out that oh my god this place is massive so all of this blue and green stuff that's over here um the, the yellow is where I'm supposed to go, um, but I spent three and a half hours, almost four hours this morning, exploring all of this stuff, because I came in over here, here's the Manus, there's my ship, but I came in over here, and all these red doors are like areas I can't even go yet, because I don't have the abilities to get behind them, so look at all these red doors and red areas and everything else, um, this map is massive. I mean, this was like three and a half, almost four hours of me just running around and exploring. And there's all this stuff, like if we go over here, like there's all of this stuff within this area to be explored. Um, and it's just, in terms of sheer size, it's just massive. So we can kind of run around and take a look at some stuff. You know, just to show you kind of how big things are. Let me see if I can go get up high real quick. Just because I want to show you in terms of size, I feel like this game has already sort of put um, Fallen Order to shame in this. Did I miss this? Oh my god, I missed a force echo over here. This is crazy. So like even now, like running around exploring, I'm finding things that I missed during my initial playthrough this morning. Probably because I was running on like two hours of sleep. Come into my outpost. I'll hunt you down and kill you myself. <laughs> Well, I like Doma's voiceover. Um, I wanted to see if I could get to a high ground here. Well, this will be a pretty decent... It's not high, high ground. But, like, there's a whole city over there. Um, there's all this stuff over there. This place is just massive. And I've, I've heard that this game 
has six planets. I don't know if that's necessarily true, uh, which I think is more than the first game had. Um, everybody says that it's bigger than the first game. And the installation size is much bigger, but that could also be a lot of the other things that they've added. So just right out of the gate, Coruscant was a lot of fun. It felt like a movie within a movie, a movie within a game. And this first starter planet is massive. It's a huge difference compared to... Um, Bogano, which is the first planet in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is very much a linear experience. And yeah, you had to come back a few times, which we're going to be doing here, because it's areas you can't explore. But just, it's a really big game. And I think this planet defines that by just saying, it's not... I wouldn't say that it's completely and fully open world, because there are areas that you can't get to yet. But it feels like an open world experience, which is different than the first game, which is pretty awesome. So you remember how in the first game you could customize a lot of stuff like the skin on the mantis and um, some of Cal's, the poncho and colors and, and, and some of the things and, and BD1 and etc. Um, the customization options here are even better than the first game and bigger and broader and beyond. So let's start off before we even look at the workbench. Let's just look at Cal. Um, we can customize Cal in a lot of different ways. So we start off with his hair. He has different hairstyles now. And these are unlocked through exploration in the game. So as you run around, you find different uh, hairstyles. Uh, this is, I think, the original hairstyle from the first game. Um, I'm rocking the man bun because I think it looks kind of cool. But he also has a beard now. And so you start off the game um, with this one right here. And you can choose whether or not he's clean shaven or has stubble. And then I found the short beard and then I found the full beard. And so far, I'm kind of liking the fact that he's looking like a little bit of a, of a hipster Jedi. Um, but then you get, you know, all these different clothing options. You can say, well, I don't want him to have any jacket at all, just a shirt. Oh, but no, I want him to have the survivor jacket. Well, what about the tactical jacket or with a cloak? Or what about the, the bomber jacket? Or how about the, the hunter jacket? Or, or what about the hermit outfit? I don't even know if there's more. Um, but you can customize all the colors. You can customize all the outfits. There's the shirt. You know, you can customize the shirt option um, colors-wise. And then the different types of pants, which I only have two at the moment. Um, but there's way more customization of how Cal looks. And I've seen some really cool... Um, uh, screenshots from people who have done some interesting things with Cal over the past uh, couple days. But beyond that, let's look. Let's take a look at the workbench. Now, I don't even have the blaster yet. I haven't unlocked the blaster. But uh, right off the bat, you you have your main lightsaber, dual wielding, or the double bladed, um, which we got in the first one. So if we use the workbench here, I think one of the cool things is that my lightsaber, um, when you go to customize it. Instead of having, you know, in the first game, you just had a row across the bottom. And then as you would go through those options, they would kind of switch the components out. But here you actually get to see them floating in the air. So you can actually place them, slot them in, and then go from each individual component and go throughout like this. And then, of course, um, once you have a component that you like, you can go down into it and, 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 and customize it with materials and everything else by going over here um, and saying, well... I want to I want to customize all these different oh wow that actually looks pretty cool I may be switching over to that really quick um, so they have color schemes but then you can go down into the color schemes and you can customize things even further for each individual thing and you can add polish or wear and tear um, I'm gonna switch over to this I like the light metal no I mean I'll leave it how it is for now but you know and I'm tempted. And then, of course, there's the blade itself. I use orange. But they have white, even. So they have all these colors that you can choose. So um, really cool options here. More options That's in the first good. game. But we also have BD1. Not only can you choose all of the different types of... You know, we could change all these different colors on BD1, right? But we can also get down into... Like the weathering, the condition, right? He's worn right now. So we could take him to pristine and he looks like he's freshly painted. You know, he's got some dings on him if he's well kept. More dings if he's worn. Way more dings if he's aged. Then if he's looking ancient, he's just looking really beat up and all the paint's chipped off. So I just love the fact that you can really customize um, how things look. I'm going to switch him to well kept instead of... Um, um, like the new look? Yeah, he does. Then we get into the stances, of course, which you have um, single, dual wield, and um, 
um, uh, two, uh, two, two, two bladed lightsaber, but you can only have two at any point in time. So when you're at one of these, uh, not at a workstation, um, but when you're at one of the, the meditation points, you can actually switch and have two of the main stances um, loaded up. But they also have this new thing called perks. And apparently there are 25 perks that you can find in the game. And then you can slot those perks to add some special bonuses to your character. So I've got this thing called Shatter, which allows me to... Um, says attacks are more effective at breaking enemies' armor. And it uses two of three slots. And apparently you earn more slots as you level up throughout the game and explore. So I'm really looking forward to getting more perks, unlocking more perk slots, and so on and so forth. But this is another area where they've enhanced the original game with some additional details here at the workbench. By the way, when I said earlier at the workbench, what I meant was you can look at those things there, but in order to change them, you have to come here to the meditation area. Now, this is very similar to the first game in the way that it operates. When you're here, you can um, do your skills. You can rest. Um, but here, you can also change between your stances um, and change your perks in and out. So you can look at your stances and look at your perks over there. But when you're here, if I were to go up into the... Um, Stances, this is current lightsaber stances, single and dual wield. And I would switch one of these out here and say, well, I want to switch dual wield out for, you know, double bladed. And I would do that accordingly. Um, and then I would back out from there and be able to go, okay, here's my single blade. And then boom, here's my dual wield back to single blade, you know. So that's really cool. And uh, But going back into the um, skill guide, it's very similar to the first one, but there are so many more options like this just goes to show me how much bigger the game is because one of the cool things here is that cal starts off this game with all of the abilities that you earned in jedi fallen order which means you're starting off the game as a seasoned jedi which is mwah, chef's kiss and then here we get to come in and see oh well now i've got your same but instead of being laid out in the in the skill tree format where you see everything from the get-go we have these three different tiers or these three different trees but you go to choose one, and, and, and you'll say, okay, I want to look at the survival tree. Okay, so we've got this resilience thing. Um, we can go through here and, and look at all of these abilities for so and so forth. But then we go over to the right, and there's like, okay, there's single-bladed lightsaber abilities, double-bladed lightsaber abilities, dual-wield lightsaber abilities, and oh, wait, let's see here. There's two more skill trees, two more... Uh, um, yeah, skill trees, which are combat related, which I haven't unlocked yet. I know one of them is like a blaster and lightsaber mode, which allows you to get an offhand blaster and use that with your uh, lightsaber, which I'm really looking forward to. I don't know what the fifth one is, so I really don't know. But then we come over here and we have Jedi Concentration, uh, Telekinesis, and Confusion, which I haven't done anything in here, but it still allows you to control the minds of... of um, um, of characters during combat, which is really cool. But you can also do things to people in, co in out of combat when you're in conversations, which is also really fun. Um, so um, way more abilities in the first game. And the question I have at this point, the only question I have is, am I going to be able to run around and explore and do side quests and everything else enough to the point where I can fill up every single one of these? Because that was one of the things I loved doing in Jedi Fallen Order was, was maxing out my character and literally just getting every little thing that I could see and find and explore and do and completely maxing out every single skill that I had in the game, which I'm hoping is the case. That's why I've been doing a completionist journey and like spent four hours this morning not even advancing the main storyline because I just wanted to clear the planet and get every single you know, max health, force thing, skill point, perk thing, all the things I could find to really max out my character. So there's that component, but there's one more thing they added, which is super dope, and that is fast travel, because, oh my god, the first game totally could have used a fast travel option, because the first game, if you're, especially if you remember, like, Zepho, the planet Zepho, um, you gotta come back to that planet three times. Well, you go there once, but you come in there three times total. The first time you're there for the tomb, second time you're there for the excavation, and the third time you're there for the Venator, I think is what it's called, that big Imperial ship that crashed, right? And each time you come there, you gotta run all the way across the planet to find the place that you're going to. That is not the case here. Now, anytime you're on a planet, you can literally go to this fast travel option and travel to any other meditation point that you've unlocked on the map. 
So again, this is only based on the ones I've unlocked at this point. Um, but there's my ship. So, you know, we could go back to that meditation point here if we wanted to. But you just click you know and hold down the a button in the case of me because i'm on the xbox and boom you will fast travel to that meditation waypoint which is so handy especially when you start thinking about all those doors and areas that you can't get to until you have the abilities that you need to be able to use to get to those places in the first place yeah you'll come back and do those later on but you'll be able to quickly get to them via the use of fast travel which is one of the biggest areas where i think it has improved upon the first game which is really 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 cool Hey everyone, Renfail here with the uh, commercial part of the video where I say, hey, if you like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. And thanks to all of our supporters are here on YouTube and over on Patreon, our highest members, our guild champions, crazy relative Remy D here on YouTube. And don't forget if you want to support, it's really easy. You can do the memberships below, the Adventurers Guild, three different tiers. There's also the super thanks on any uploaded video or YouTube short that you find. There's also, of course, the super chats and stickers that you could do on any live stream or premiere, and the Patreon page if you want to dive into the fantasy world that I have with my brother and my wife, which is a tabletop game, a point and click adventure game, and a fantasy book series. All are great ways to keep this channel going and me going full time. Thanks again for those of you who support. Let's get back to the video that you're watching now. All right, combat is another area of the game where I feel like it's way better than the first game and the combat fe feels way smoother so here's some battle droids here and I'm just running around getting shot at for the moment so you guys can see this but not only do we have oh we have way more force abilities than we did in the first game but I just feel that the combat is way smoother and you've got way more abilities now I'm playing on story mode because when I play a game for the first time I'm not really looking to be challenged overly so I just want to be able to play and have fun and do cool stuff um, but um, let's see if I can go over to do this encounter here uh, dun, dun, dun. Ah! all right we're gonna do that again because there's an encounter I know that's up top there that I want to show you guys because it really makes you feel um, like uh, a really badass Jedi but there's also something else I wanted to talk about here let's see if I can get up onto this there we go all right let's go up here there should be a whole bunch of dudes here okay. Oh, let's switch over to my... Alright, let's try this. Ah, I got hit twice! All right, let's take care of this guy. Finish him off. So, dual wielding is really about fast-paced combat. Oh. do a really good job of just the combat is really super fast paced and it makes you feel like a Jedi and you have all these new abilities and new lightsaber stances and everything else which makes it really fun and I'm not that adept at combat right now because I just got started back playing the game and I got a lot to learn and I, I'll admit that I'm sloppily playing because I'm on story mode and once you get into the higher tiers you have to really be on your toes because this could turn into a Dark Souls style game very quickly and very easily if you're not paying attention um, so combat is something that I feel like the game has 
picked up a notch because you have a whole lot of new abilities and you have to use those in combat um, to deal with bigger groups of mobs and uh, more variety in terms of boss mobs and stuff, which has been a lot of fun so far. So in short, you know, without spoiling everything because there's a lot here to talk about um, and of course we're gonna have the final review later on down the road they're just there's a lot of things that they've done that they've added to jedi fallen order which have made it more than the first game i haven't shown it here yet because i didn't have anything close at hand that allowed me to do it but you also have use of a grappling hook now which is an additional way to traverse the the landscape um, you could jump on bars now and swing across them um, and do things like that so there's more platforming than there was in the first game um, which is a lot of fun and there's just feel like there's more combat there's more force powers there's more platforming and there's more exploration there's open world also you could talk to npcs now and do quests like i came across a side mission earlier um, which was for me to do a um a quest in some mines i'm closing the door here because i had a cat come in um so there's side quests now that you can do, uh, talking to NPCs, which I talked about. But also, you can influence their mind with the Force to open up additional conversation options in the dialogue trees. So there's just lots of little things that they've added to the game, which just make it better and more fun. And so far, my first impressions is that if Jedi Fallen Order was a great game, which it was, I gave it a 10 out of 10, this is the Star Wars experience turned up to 11. This game is better by far in every way that I've seen so far compared to the first game. And I am just absolutely having a blast. So with that being said, if you want to see more of me playing this game or more of my reviews and videos and game guides and stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. And stick around for more Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Until next time, everybody, may the Force be with you. Have fun. Safe gaming.